Olá! Olá! Olá, Let Mila! me. Let me... Do you have me? Just... Yes, just a second, because I don't I don't see myself. I, I don't see. know why. You see me? Yeah. Let me see how I can see myself. Here we go. Yeah! Hola! <laughs> hey! Thank you, Pedro, for this interview. You're Take time welcome. for me. Uh, You're actually, welcome. It's, it's my first time in English, so I am a little afraid, but we'll see. <laughs> yes, you we can the... use gestures. Yes, we, we can make one hour with just <laughs> but I think no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, do you have a question before to begin? No, I don't no. think so. And how do you feel now? I'm okay. Okay. So, it starts. <laughs> yes. Um, my first question is the same for all the facilitators. It's uh, how did you meet vocal improvisation? Okay, how did I meet? It's a good question. I, I've never re really stopped to think about this in a deeper level. Well, I think there are many, many answers. Okay, let's go. Because, uh, um, I think one one kind of vocal improvisation that I met was through Bobby McFerrin. This is one kind. There is another kind that I met before Bobby, which was with Barbatukis, which is a Brazilian music group. Before and Bobby. Barba... Before Bobby, yes. Okay. Or maybe at the same time, because my father, I think it was my father that showed me Bobby's stuff when I was young. And he, he is a musician. My father is a musician. And he always showed me a lot of artists and he showed me Bobby uh, McFerrin and I loved it. And then I, I also, maybe at the same time, I I met Barbatukis in Brazil, but I had, um, I had the chance to live, like to see them, to meet them, to become friends with Barbatukis. So that influence was a lot stronger for me. But also, I'm trying to remember like the first references for vocal improvisation. My mom is a singer. I don't know if she was improvising. I'm not sure. Your dad? But I, uh, sorry? Your dad, maybe? My dad wasn't improvising vocally, but he was uh, improvising musically because he's a guitarist. And he was improvising. He improvises a lot. And also in Brazil, there are two big artists that also are famous for improvising, which are, one is Nana Vasconcelos. Okay. And another one is Hermeto Pascual. And these are big, big artists in improvisation. And they influenced Barbatukis as well. So they were also some references for me. Thank you. And your first time you, you test the vocal improvisation? You practice it? I think the first time I tried vocal improvisation was with Barbatukis and Fernando Barba because he had a, he had a study group and I was part of this study group. Actually, there was one teacher that was in this study group mm -hmm. and I met him before Barba. Um, he was actually my teacher in school. He was my uh, teacher for maths. Okay. And he was, he was teaching maths and he was also teaching 
body percussion games, musical games, improvised games in my school as a optional subject. And that was the only subject I liked in school. The, all the rest I hated. So I think maybe that was the first time I did it more consciously because I believe in our lives, we we improvise vocally and we we don't even know that we are doing that. You know, as kids, sometimes mm -hmm. we play with voice and we, you know, you can say sing maybe like da, bla, 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 or something like that. It, this is vocal improvisation already. Yes. But I think that was the first, the first conscious moment mm. that I was like, oh, okay, this is like an improvisation game. This is really cool. Yeah. So that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a high school. High school. Okay. I was 16, yeah, 16, 17. So already hold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I begin with Musica do Circolo. Uh, mm -hmm. With Susa and Ronaldo, you are the three principal facilitators of the Musica do Circolo. Mm -hmm. What is it? Uh, where does it, does it come from? And uh, what the goals, the essence? Mm -hmm. A lot of questions in one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try to understand. I'll try to, to answer and then you you ask me again if I miss something. So... What is Musica do Circulo? Musica do Circulo is a project that we created in Brazil. It was created by me, Zuza, and Ronaldo. And we created it based on our experience with um, Bobby's work and mainly with Barbatuki's mm -hmm. work. We were inspired by Barbatuki's by Fernando Barba, by Stenio Mendes. And we were we had a study group and we were studying every week for many years. And then we started thinking about new projects. So we created this trio, me, Zuz, and Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. And we started doing things together. And we started discovering a way of leading musical circles, um, vocal Uh, improvisation circles, body percussion circles, in a specific way. And so this, the project was born first, and then the our methodology came later, and then it became a methodology. So nowadays we call it a methodology. Some people nowadays study the methodology to learn how to lead Musica do Circulo experiences. So today it's a project and it's also a methodology that people can use. Um, so this was what is Musica do Circo. <laughs> uh, and then how how was how it was born? You yes, see, you yes. answered about that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah I What the goals? That. And the goals. I think the main goals of Musica do Circo are to help people experience something that is helping develop their musicality in an organic way, in a nice, pleasant, fun way, and also to help them develop their relationships with other people, new connections, mm. and also self-awareness and knowledge about themselves. So it's a both musical and relational social experience and we try to create that in an inclusive way and soft gentle fun deep way and and collective very collective very interactive as well i think i think this is it wow uh i, I know that you you're formed in uh non-violent communication and collaborate um collaborative tools of pedagogical mm -hmm. uh, practice, um, mm -hmm. but not in art particularly. It's that who helps you to, to, to lead this way? Or what helps for you to lead with this uh, organic uh, mm. way? I think 
the influences from Barba Tukes, from Fernando Barba, from Stenio Mendes, they already helped us learn how to lead in a very gentle and nice way. You know, our school really helped us. And then later we started learning some new tools, some new collaborative methodologies and studying nonviolent communication and ways to look at a group, you know, because before our, our experience was very musical. So we learned how to lead the musical games, but then later when we started learning the collaborative methodologies, we learned how to look at a group, mm. how to imagine the trajectory, the, you know, the experience of the group. So you start like this and then maybe you do this and do that and do that. So you can create a musical, but also collaborative experience and people will feel connected to each other. So later, these tools really helped us um, to to lead in a nice way, to communicate with people in a nice way, you know, to to manage people's emotions in the experience, to help also create space to for people to share how they were feeling during the experience, after the experience, you know, uh, and we didn't have tools for that before. We didn't know how to manage this kind of situation. And also to communicate between us because working together can be challenging. Can the the be three of you or, uh, or together with the other participants? Um, between us three. Okay. Yeah, these tools really help us communicate to each other because we are facilitating together. We are working together. We have a company nowadays so working together can be amazing because, you know, we ha you have different talents and different skills. So it's awesome. You know, when, when we are leading together, normally the experience is very rich. Mm. And I will never be able to do the same, you know, to lead the same experience without them. It's amazing. It's something magical. But at the same time, sometimes it's hard. Because I want to do something, they want to do something else. You know, we have our preferences, our styles. Sometimes I do something and they don't like, you know, sometimes somebody does something when leading the group and the other two don't like. So we talk about it. it you know, it's not always easy and calm. Mm. It's It can be challenging. So it's both amazing and very rich and challenging. And I think these tools also help us you know, communicate and deal with each other. It's challenging also because you every time improvise improvise the, the practice, the the session. And mm -hmm. so you have to manage the the leading with two other people, the feelings and flow of the participants, and uh yeah, how to improvise and uh, and find something to I don't know if there is uh, less energy to um yeah uh retrouver uh, uh, uh find back <laughs> this energy uh, yeah. yeah um you mean to to reconnect in a way yeah to reconnect it's a good word <laughs> yeah yeah i think so um yeah, we, we improvise a lot, not only during the games, but also the, the way, the order of the games, the things we do. So this is also a situation that invites us to have a kind of a bigger flexibility because mm. you don't know what the other one is going to do. So you kind of have to let go and breathe and say, okay, let's see what's going to happen. And yeah, I think these tools also help us reconnect to each other whenever there is something that we don't like, you know, and when the, whenever there is a conflict between us. Yeah, I think these tools really help. And what helps you to um, reconnect the three people when, uh, in this case, there is a conflict 
between you, you three. What helps you That's to help. okay, we come back. Hmm. I think um I think we try to have a kind of relationship that is an honest relationship and we try to say things in a way that we we don't hurt each other but we also uh, try to be sincere and transparent and also try to have an empathetic you know to mm -hmm. have empathy when we are sharing something and yeah i think we are we try to be patient with each other and and sometimes to let go of things you know sometimes i want to do something in this way but the other two want to do it in another way so i'll say okay let's do you know the other way and let's try this time and then the next time maybe we try our, our my way so i think we try to to cultivate that kind of relationship a flexible and patient and understanding a relationship what do you learn about you in this situation Be because you you did it uh, you three since fif 15 years maybe 13? um yeah we we know we met in 2006 more or less so it's around like um yeah 17 years ago something like that but we didn't start working as three exclusively 17 years ago so we started working really together maybe 2014 so that's nine years more or less um and what I discovered about myself well many things many things I discovered that Improvisation really helps me uh, work on a personal side that is like the flex flexibility to let go of things, to be more open to things because I like planning stuff. I like controlling. I like, you know, understanding. So basically the, the work that I do, I think it's healthy mm -hmm. for me for my mental health, my <laughs> physical health. I think it's healthy, but it's also challenging because it's uncomfortable. Many times it's uncomfortable to not know where you're going, you know, what you're going to do. But the more I do, I think the more I feel more flexible mm -hmm. and open. Um, yeah, what have I learned I think I think I I'm still learning a lot and there are things that I don't really know how to define or how they work for example we we talk a lot about community we have we like this word and we like this idea of building a community through vocal improvisation through body percussion through musica do circo we like this idea but what is a community? You know, because we have different understandings. We have different under understandings. Mm. And I think it's a challenge, su challenging subject. I don't know how to define. I like the idea, but I don't know how to define it. What is the limit between a community and a non-community, you know, so I think it's challenging. I'm still learning. I, I discovered that I don't know what a community <laughs> is. This is what I discovered about myself. And I also, I think with this work, I discovered my voice as well. Because when I was young, I, I was playing the drum kit when I was a kid. I, I got a drum kit when I was three. My parents were... Wow musicians so I was playing the drum kit and then when I was a teenager I was playing the drum kit and a little bit of percussion and I wasn't singing much I remember singing with my mom when I was really young but then later I was really into rhythm but then even later when 
I started leading and developing more, and then the voice came. So it was great to integrate, you know, rhythm and voice together, body percussion and voice, and discover my voice. This was awesome. And lover? If I love my voice? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think I'm I'm still discovering. Yesterday I was singing here and and I was discovering new things about my voice. I think I was like, "Oh, I I think I've never sung this way," you know. So I was oh, there's there's something changing. There's something alive, you know. And if you if you stop singing, it's going to go like but then you start singing again, it's going to go open more. So it's it's an a a thing that is alive. It's really interesting. Mm. But you begin with rhythm. And for you, is it possible to to do vocal improvisation without uh, good basis in rhythm? Or I have the, the feeling that in Musica do Circulo, that you base on the rhythm and after you Im vocally improvise. Mm -hmm. I think, well, if somebody doesn't have a, a notion of rhythm, I think they can still do vocal improvisation, you know, it, especially if there is no rhythm as a bass, you know, if it's more like an open thing and there is just like yeah. improvising voices and sounds. Yeah, it's totally possible. Musica do Circulo is very based on rhythm. You know, the, the the rhythmic influence and the presence of rhythm, body percussion in, in Musica do Circulo is a strong. Um, but so, sometimes we start with the rhythm and then we put the voice. Sometimes we start with the voice and then we put the rhythm. So I, I don't think there is a specific order. But yeah, rhythm and melody, rhythm and voice, they really... They come together when it's Musica do Circulo. But when it's not, you're free, you're free to do anything, you know. Ah, it happens sometimes. Do... Huh? It happens sometimes. It, it's it's mess up. It don't work. I have the feeling that you, you never mess up. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. We do mess up a lot. Um, but... Yeah, well, messing up when you're facilitating hurts a lot. For me, it hurts. It's a, it's a, it's a very annoying, uncomfortable, frustrating feeling. It hurts. It, yeah, it's disgusting. It's like, oh no. <laughs> Depending on what happened, you know, and sometimes. Well, sometimes that's that that happens. You, you're trying to facilitate something, and that thing doesn't work the way you want it, or the group doesn't get where you wanted them to go. You know, or maybe the musicality is not something that made you satisfied. So I think it's easy to feel frustrated. Mm. when you're facilitating, and that's a big challenge, I think. When you are facilitating to deal with your frustration with your anger with your feelings with your fears you know your insecurities and that's a big part of of facilitation for me and do you play it with it you have this feeling so okay i accept and i will lead with this fear or with this anger or with Yeah, I think in Musica do Circulo, we try to welcome our, our own feelings, our, our, our own feelings and each other's feelings when we are facilitating together and also participants' feelings. So we really try to create an experience that is inclusive also for us who are leading because it can be really nice you know you you can say to the group oh yeah feel free to make mistakes it's all good 
But if you make a mistake, how are you going to treat yourself? Mm. And how can you how can you deal with your own expectations, you know, when you're facilitating? That's a big part. And I think it's it's a muscle that we exercise and we strengthen. And, you know, the more you exercise talking to yourself and saying, oh, it's okay, you know, you can welcome your own frustration or don't don't be too angry with the group. Try to find a nice way of saying things if things didn't work the way you wanted. Because in the past, especially in the past, sometimes it happens still, but I had moments that I was angry with the group and I was like, you know, saying things to the group and then people really stepped back and disconnected because... They don't want they don't want to hear that. So that that's the the natural reaction whenever somebody is, you know, angry and doing this. People won't be like, oh, tell me. <laughs> they won't be, they will be like, no, no, I don't want to deal with this, you know. <laughs> so it's a challenging thing to deal with your anger, mm -hmm. your frustration. Sometimes your frustration is with the group. Sometimes it's with yourself. Sometimes sometimes it's with the person who you are co-facilitating. Mm. Sometimes it's with everybody <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> so it can be challenging, but it's also a research. I think it's a, a very important research. How do you deal with your feelings when you're facilitating? Yeah. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. Pedro, how do you explain that people know that vocal improvisation and rhythm uh, the practice of um, circle song uh, can help people to deal better with uh, their feelings. Mm -hmm. I think it really depends on who is leading and how this person is leading. Because mm. sometimes we associate, you know, vocal improv or circle singing or body percussion, whatever. We associate that with a certain feeling or a certain way of leading, but they are not always together necessarily. You know, sometimes I've seen some people that were not feeling okay. They, they were not feeling included in circles of vocal improv. So I don't think it's always helping people deal with their feelings you know i think it really depends on how the person who is leading is leading how this person is um talking about feelings is this person talking about feelings or is this person welcoming feelings somehow because we we can say we can verbalize things but we can also Depending depending on how we react non-verbally to what's happening, you can show everybody more or less what's the logic, you know, what's the game. So I think it really depends. I think uh, I don't take it for granted that vocal improv, circle singing is a, is a thing that helps people deal with their feelings, you know. It's not a therapy. I think it can be therapeutic, definitely can be, but it will also depend on how the person who is leading is leading. Mm. Because, because the, sometimes it can be, you know, if, if somebody is leading a session of vocal improv or circle singing in a harsh way, in, you know, in a rigid way and putting pressure and being angry and stuff then, then it's not going to be so therapeutic and it's going to be a bit like uh so i think traumatizing. It, <laughs> huh? traumatizing yes yes can be traumatizing depending on how people lead it can be definitely you know if somebody is exposed too much or if somebody I don't know, feels like they're being pressured somehow and this is not good for them. So, yeah. But 
in general, I think the especially the circle singing practice, I think it's quite a welcoming because vocal improv can be many things. Mm. And if you go to the performing world of vocal improv, sometimes there is more pressure, right? Because you're performing, you're on stage, you're you're supposed to, you know, perform and sing perfectly in the conventional way of, you know, in our culture of stage culture, our performative culture. Many times you feel more pressure when you're performing. But if you're not performing, then maybe it can be a bit lighter. You know, the circle singing community, I think it's... Uh, I think we try to be light and welcoming with people and help them feel comfortable. But that doesn't happen always. I think it happens a lot, but not always. I agree. And so the connection of uh, ourselves is something. And the connection with the other, how, how your practice, how your leading helps to make people connections. Yes. You you want to know about the different kinds of connections we can establish, like with myself, with the others? Is that it? Why not? Now, the, the question was, um, how, how do you think that your practice helps people to have connection? With each other. Can, can we explain that? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Especially Musica do Circulo, it's a very interactive practice. It's a very interactive approach. So normally when we are leading, we will in many ways try to make people pay attention to each other. So we're going to play around with the names of the people who are there. We're going to walk around looking at each other. We're going to, you know, clap together like this. We're going to um, find ways of making people touch each other in a simple, soft way, you know, and, and also listen to each other. So we are going to open the opportunity of people creating their own music and listen while they are listening to each other's music. So there are many layers that we use uh, musically, socially, visually, spatially that make people, you know, pay attention to each other and value each other, recognize each other. Mm. So in this way, I think our aim is to we don't want to create a competitive environment. And this way people start feeling welcome, feeling included, you know, realizing that it's okay to have different levels of musicality and it's okay to make mistakes. And all these things, I, th I think they help them relax. You know, the shoulders, they come down a little bit more and, They're like, oh, okay, so we are all humans here and cool. We're trying stuff. And it's very common to see, you know, the, if you have many sessions of Musica do Circulo, you will see the connection between the people really going up. And you can see that even through physical touch, you know, in the beginning, no one is touching it, no one. But in the end, many times people are like, more comfortable with, with holding hands or, or hugging or, you know, caressing. So this is uh, like a thermometer for us that, oh, okay, people are connecting more. There are other symptoms that also reveal that people are more connected. They talk more to each other. They know each other's names. They exchange contacts. Because sometimes you go to a course or, or to experience I've been a participant in experiences that I finished sometimes a whole retreat. I didn't know anyone's names and that was it, you know? So in Musica do Circulo, we really emphasize this kind of connection. What I learned from you, your, your, your three Musica do Circulo, is that 
you can concretize, um, ra ra rationalize the spirit of all this vocal improvisation uh, and rhythm, rhythm uh, mood uh, experiences in a concrete pedagogic, I don't know the name. You rationalize what we experience is, and this experience is for us sometimes just uh, yeah, crazy, dreaming. I, I don't know how to say that, but what is first? You imagine rationalize uh, uh, an exercise and you try on people, or during a session, you improvise an exercise and after you rationalize, ra rationalize it. When you say rationalize, you mean uh, something like you understand consciously what that exercise stimulates in yes. people? Yes. Uh, yes. I think it's both. You know, I think sometimes we, we know that there is a certain game that helps people connect in this way. So we're going to do that game. But also sometimes we improvise the games. Sometimes we create a new game on the, on the spot. And we have an idea and, you know, and you start developing it and then you go like, oh, from here I can go maybe there. And then you keep going and you discover something. And, and that's, a, that's another way of leading. Mm. You discover it on, on the spot. And, and then maybe later you will realize, ah, oh, I think this game really helps people, you know, develop this thing. So it's, I think it's both. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you, um, you did a game about that, well, a game about yeah. all your experiences and the game you create or the goals that you understand uh, in this game. Can you uh, talk about this game? Yeah, do you mean um, those eight games that we use? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, so the games that we use, we didn't create them. We 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 learned them from uh, Bobby McFerrin, from Barbatokis, from Fernando Barba, from Stenio Mendes. But the way we started leading them, it's it was a new way. Mm. So um, we use these games and they they serve us as um you know the the raw material the, the, that's where we start we use the games as a tool and we create variations and sometimes we improvise the variations so many times we do a game but we've never done that game in that way so it's a new variation. Is a, Sometimes it's improvised. Many times it's improvised. But the essence of that game is there. So mm -hmm. basically we understood that we use eight games. Eight basic games. We use other games as well. And we are open to that because sometimes you learn a new game. But we understood that there are eight games that we normally use and we 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 did that because <clears throat> sorry we did that because we wanted to teach other people so other people wanted to learn with us how to lead so then we started saying okay so i, I think we have to organize it and understand it because you know we know how to do it but now that other people want to learn so then we understood there are eight elements that are always there in Musica do Circulo. We understood that there are eight games that are always there. We understood that there are eight spatial formats that are always there and we explore space in a very particular way. So then uh, it was easier to understand and then to teach it to other people. So. 
yeah, basically the games are eight games that we learned and we use them. And, and sometimes and many times we flow from one game to another without stopping. Because the conventional way is you do a game, you stop, and then, okay, we're going to do another game now. But then we found a way of developing a flow between one game and the other and the other, and then you keep going like that. And that creates a really nice, special energy in the experience. So we do that a lot. Oh, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if I I, underst- I, I I answered your question. See, si, 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 you answer. Thank you. Cool. You, you so so you teach people uh, how to lead um, vocal, enfin, circle singing. Yeah. Your practice. Uh-huh. You don't teach how to lead with two other people. With two other people. How to co co facilitate. Ah uh, yeah yeah we do yeah. You do we too. Do. We do yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, you always have this option, you know, if you want to lead by yourself, you will have specific challenges and pleasures. <laughs> and if you lead with other people, you will also have specific <laughs> challenges and pleasures. Um, yeah, and I think it's nice to do both, you know, to lead mm. by yourself and to lead with other people, especially if you understand more or less the the logic in a similar way you know if you if you understand the games in a similar way or the facilitation that that helps a lot because i've seen many people who were very different trying to co-lead and that was a bit difficult so i think it's nice when you have a, a similar style i mean if people with different styles are facilitating together and it works amazing because Ooh. then you know, it's going to be diverse nothing against that you, you tell before that um you three are uh, some uh each talent each um not talent but yeah as a performance a home performance what the difference between you three Ah. Let anyone uh, give to the other people, to the yeah. other people. Well, I think it's I think it's hard to define exactly, but for example, Zuza has a vocal work that is a lot more developed than me and Ronaldo. You know, his experience with vocal work is really cool, really rich. Um, Ronaldo works a lot with games and chaos, like crazy, messy dynamics that are, you know, fun and light and then make people get to know each other and relax and connect. And I also, I I don't know what I do, <laughs> maybe a mix, um, but I sometimes I bring the a consciousness about the body, I really like nonverbal, you know, communication and facilitation. So I'm playing, I'm, I'm doing more like a clowny facilitation. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know my speciality. <laughs> you have a lot, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you spoke about your uh, non- nonverbal uh, communication. And you mm-hmm. did a lot with mimic, with gesture. Where mm-hmm. where does it come from? How do you learn that? Or it's natural, maybe? I think it's both. I think it's a uh, part of my, my nonverbal way of leading is based on my personality because I am I'm, I'm somebody who likes being quiet and not speaking much. And I think I think during my life I learned how to speak, to speak in public, to communicate. But I really like being quiet, and I really like the world of nonverbal communication. Mm. You know, things that happen nonverbally. I really like communicating with kids, like babies, and you know, kids that don't speak yet, because 
it's it's a really cool game and you can really connect and it's a special thing you know when you don't involve the words the words are amazing i like the words but the no word universe it's really cool so i think it's a personal thing but also i did some training i did clowning a little bit i worked with physical theater so this really helped um yeah it helped a lot i really like physical physical communication you know body language i really like that and and i really like clowning and miming i really like it i'm a, I'm a big fan of that so these are my influences i think and we are a big fan when you mimic yourself <laughs> <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah uh, i think that also helps being really clear about what's happening you know because when we are facilitating especially if you're using the nonverbal thing if you're doing a lot of stuff all the time it can be confusing so i really like developing you know this accuracy this precision mm. what's going to happen you know how can we make this clear so people understand and it's a different way of conducting because the conventional way of conducting is i have my choir here and um communicating here but when you are in the circle you have a 360 degree view so how can you communicate with everyone you know you look around and you make sure everyone feels in the same boat it's really fun it's challenging but it's fun thank you Pedro. um to, to finish i have two two maybe questions uh -huh. Do you have um, an anecdote that you want to share with us about a wonderful moment that you live with uh, vocal improvisation? When you when you say anecdote, what what's that? Um, personal like story, story, personal, personal story. memories. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So a wonderful moment. Yeah, that you live wonderful or. Uh -huh. not wonderful or uh-huh uh-huh wonderful for well, you yeah i now that you said that uh, uh, a specific thing came to my mind i remember once i was living in london and i i was asleep and i had a dream that i was doing a circle song and everyone was singing together and playing and this was a very emotional dream. And there were people that I could recognize from the circle singing community, from, you know, Barbatuk's community. And we were all together singing. And, and I woke up and I had the melody in my head still yeah. that we were singing. And that had never happened in my life, you know, to remember a melody that I was dreaming about. That's crazy. And I was, I felt so emotional and I, I recorded the melody so I didn't, I didn't forget. And I think this really shows me how much of this work is in my, you well, know, you spirit and is in my life because it's a great place for me. So I was dreaming about this feeling that I have whenever I'm with people singing in this way. So this was a very nice situation that I had really, yeah, it was so delicate and so sensitive. It was so nice, so, so deep. I woke up crying. I remember Gosh. I woke up crying. Like I was really emotional, like, oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> and I think that has to do with all the experiences that I had that were wonderful experiences and that, that really changed my life i want to dream it <laughs> thank you maybe, maybe if you ask yourself before going yeah. to bed i will try <laughs> and what next what the next project for you or our dream next for project you? <laughs> yeah next pro project or next 
dream. I don't know about the future. Our way. Yeah. It's a good question. I think the the next steps for me and for us in Musica do Circulo it is to expand our trainings, expand our retreats because right now we we only have retreats in Brazil. Maybe we will expand that. Or for example, in-person trainings, we only have that in Brazil. Now we're starting to organize something abroad. So I guess that will be the next step, you know, to have more things happening around the world and to conquer the world. Yeah. And the world is going to be ours. <laughs> Conquistador. <laughs> yes, to put our flag in every <laughs> country. Oh, I have another question. I forget yeah. it. I uh -huh. read that before Musica do Circulo, you were in Los Fritos. Los Fritas? Yes. 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 Os Fritos, yes. And I, 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 I know that this name as a history so can you just yeah. explain why los fritos yes, los fritos? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, basically fernando barba had a study group okay uh, body music body music study group and this study group would get together every week to study and some of our studies were really complex was like coordination really challenging stuff you know you're doing something with your mouse and then you're playing something here and something else with your feet and we gave a nickname to that we called it fritar which means to fry so you, we would get together to fry our brains you know to <laughs> fry ourselves while trying to do all these challenges And then when Barba left, we gave this nickname to the group. So we called the group Fritos, you know, the, the fried, the, the fried, fried people. Lane. Yeah, the fried people. And so Fritos came from that. And, and we had this study group for seven years. And also another thing came from that, which was Fritura Livre which is, um, you know, in France, you have the Chant pour tous. Yes. And in Brazil, we have a, a similar thing called Fritura Livre, which is every month we, we get together in a park and we play the games and we make Musica do Circulo with anyone who wants to come. It's free, it's open, and it's based on vocal improv, body percussion, you know. So this happens every month and it's called Fritura Livre, Livre which means free um, fry, something like that. Okay. And so it, came, it was inspired in the study group, but it's now open to anyone who wants to come. I understand better now. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, to finish, do you have something that you want to share? Um, to finish um, well there there are many things that I could say but I, um, I think we are living in a great moment yeah I think we're living in a great moment because there are so many things happening in this sense you know many little bubbles are expanding and being created in many countries in so many places and these bubbles are connected because nowadays it's easier to be connected and we are learning with each other you know in the states in brazil in in europe and i think this is great because we can see many festivals being created many retreats many trainings many gatherings it's a very rich moment and yeah and i think with with time i think we will start valuing valuing it more uh we will start understanding how important this is i think right now we're still discovering you know yeah culturally we're still discovering but 
I think with time we will realize how important this is for people's lives because it's a way of ah it's a way of breathing you know it's a way of connecting to other people too it's a way of feeling that you belong to a community a way of meeting new people a way of learning about yourself so it's great it's fun and it's magical and it's sometimes it's even spiritual so it's really nice mm. yeah i think that's it i totally agree <laughs> i love how you explain that and mm -hmm. we have a lot to do to create to to test to discover all together and i, I love that we can connect with other countries and the difference also with the culture and uh, all this brain and art and body together can and can do some beautiful things i think yeah 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 it's a great network mm. happy to have you in my network ah yes <laughs> and happy to happy to be contributing to your your work there now my little part <laughs> nice really nice my bubble yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah and have a good time with the two other beautiful people ronaldo and suda and mm -hmm. yeah let's continue what you're doing because for me you're really you three doing that very well very uh with a lot of humanity and heart and yeah it's beautiful thank you for that nice thank you too cool thank you you're welcome thank you too thank you for your um presence here okay thanks beijos ciao ciao beijos <laughs>